Yeah, I'm gonna need ice cream. You just- I'm gonna- I'm here. As a resource. Just let me know what you need. Oh, thanks. Should I go get my Rococo wig? <laughs> let me know when I should. Also, I said, um, we have impro improved our relations with France to 100%, but I kept the diplomat there to maintain that. Are you sure? Because you don't have any diplomats talking to France. I thought I did. And we're like at 100% friends it, now. It could be because I think I got the same pop-up and I may have clicked the opposite button. I don't know what happens in that case. So if oh. you want to do that, just, just right-click on France and send the diplomat back. Chat wants me to describe taste. Well, taste is a concept of sensation used with your tongue. You you put things in it and then you can tell what they... Do you mean the taste of the ice cream? Or what taste is as a sense? I, I didn't understand. Why? Why or what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a nerd. I gotta... <laughs> <laughs> he just says describe taste. So, I mean... I just tried to interpret it as literally as possible, which is hyperbole, and that's just what I enjoy. It's fun. Describe the mouth feel. <laughs> what does ice cream feel like in mouth? <laughs> it's cold. Uh, it tastes like mint. It's mint moose tracks. It's really good. Uh oh. A merchant family from Portco, Port Porto has come to greedily expand our long-range trade with Morocco by successfully establishing themselves in both Fez and Moroccan hid. Hitherland. They have come to be very influential in both our societies and very rich. This is a situation we could probably make use of. Off with we their heads. We should not ask what they can do for us, but what is good for them is good for us. Let us take... Let us make Vincente Rebello a new architect for trade policy. Ooh, okay, let's see. Portugal gains influential training family until... Guild 2 train fish. Oh, what do you think? Should I should I actually just bring this guy into court or should I just have them be an influential trading family? I don't, do you trust him? Does he seem like a know. good guy? I mean, I mean LARP, like, from a LARP, LARP oh, perspective. Oh, no, it's time down. See, you gotta, that, that was three months. It took her three months to make a decision. I bet you take forever to get ready to go to dinner. Oh like, to like God. go out of the house. Are you one of those people? How long does it take oh, yeah. you? Oh god, That's, I knew it. Oh, absolutely, without a doubt, but you know what, at least I look fabulous when I- <laughs> Yeah, me, me too. <laughs> I, I do that too, yeah. I take- Yeah? I, I know, it must take you forever to brush your hair. To look fe- yeah. Yeah, hey, chat, chat was actually giving me shit because I haven't shaved my head in a few days, like a week or so, and there's like a little tiny bit of hair here. And they could actually see it. It's not very nice of them. <laughs> the Pope has announced that one of our rulers most- and re rever blah 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 was actually a saint. Oh yay! We are saints. I'm a saint. I'm a saint. See, it always happens. You know, you don't know you don't know what you're doing, chat. And look, she just gets random stab events. Saint I'm proclaimed. Saint. She says, "Let them eat cake, and lose the stability," and then the Pope I just know, comes I'm, around I and he's like, I'm the saint. "So like, whatever, <laughs> it's fine." <laughs> just wait until we see some comets. Yeah, just just so you guys know, my my beard is a wig too. Yeah, so is mine. I put it on. This is what takes me <laughs> so long to get ready to go out. I I put my beard my beard wig on, and uh, look fabulous. Listen, if you guys like big hair though, like I have other big hair I could put on. I have pink hair. I have purple hair. White um, hair. I I don't think you can say that without delivering. You, you're gonna have to. Put on big hair. More big hair? Bigger. Yeah. Bigger? Can Hold you on. put on two hair? Two? I can't put on two hair. I mean, I could put on two hair, but it looks dumb. <laughs> that means she's tried it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Who hasn't done a wig reveal? Gosh. Okay, wait. I have one right behind me. I'll get big hair. Okay. Oh, this game's gonna explode. I'm pausing it. Pause doesn't work with the space bar. You've got to press in the corner, remember? Oh, that's right. Sorry. It's not multi- yeah, multiplayer. Okay, wait, wait. I thought it was real hair. At the event. So did a lot of others. So did, like, all of chat. Everyone was surprised when, uh... When I accidentally told them that it was a wig. Oops. <laughs> okay, this is big hair. So why do you wear wigs? 
aside from LARPing. It's fun and easy. <laughs> do you think do you think I could pull it off? Should I wear wigs? Yeah, oh my gosh, you'd be great. They make actually they make really nice ones for men now. They're not like the the toupee that that people no, always no, make no. fun they of. They used to be. They used to be, but there's a lot of new companies making like actually really like convincing. Like if you got one that matched your hair color, like you wouldn't be able to tell. I mean, if you weren't already known for not having hair. What about for my beard? Are there actually beard wigs? I would love to. Yeah, have there's a beard. beard wigs. <laughs> I get one. I Are you serious? Wigs, there's beard wigs. Yeah. There's now, eyebrow wigs too. Now King Afonso is an embezzler. Wow. Why weird. are you such a bad ruler? I, you know, <laughs> I'm trying. Our heir is malevolent and you are an embezzler. I'm a saint. No, you're an embezzler. You're self-profiteering, like you're profitizing. You're making all the money yourself. <laughs> How can I stop this? You can't. You're a bad king, queen, whatever. So uh, we have an alert that's new. Uh, well, it's not new, but we, we can take it, saying it's time to invest in military technology. It's usually a good idea to do that. I don't think I got that one. Well, it's not a pop-up. In the top left corner, there's the alerts. There's No, the... no, yeah, I know, but mine only says, uh... Just... Oh, I can invest in a new technology. Ha! Huh, I'm just dumb, sorry. There we so, go. It's letting us know. Yep. Yeah. Let's standardize those pikes. They should all be the same length. <laughs> Stealing is against the Bible. <laughs> it's fine. No. You're gonna lose your sainthood. <laughs> <laughs> you embezzler. Oh no. When the Pope finds out what you did, he's gonna be mad. No, me and the Pope <laughs> are BFFs. Actually, funny enough, do you know that I saw the guy who played the Pope at U4? Like at the beginning in the beginning of December at um I went to Pax Unplugged in Pennsylvania. And he's local to there, and he met up with me, and we went to this post-apocalyptic restaurant, and we got so drunk. It was awesome. He was yeah. a local guy. Yeah. yeah. He was really... Do you remember the last night? And he was really dancing. Oh, yeah. We were all really turned, though, to be fair. We were all pretty smashed. I mean, oh, I yeah. know I was. <laughs> I mean, he's a priest, so that guy knows how to drink. <laughs> <laughs> he's a cool guy. And I also met some of the other players um, that went... Uh, which was which was cool. Uh, they some of them like actually showed up to Pax Unplugged, and they were like, "Oh my god, can we get a picture? Like, we can't believe it." They're like, "You look so different with your natural hair," and I'm like, "Yeah, I know, not big hair." So, not to distract you from the game or the random thoughts, <laughs> just want to point something out that's interesting that's happened. It's rare. I got two pop-ups just now. You probably did too. My King Francis accepted peace with Burgundy. They have given up Reims to Burgundy. So they lost a province to Bur Burgundy, and then Provence also gave up Barois. So France lost their war against Burgundy, and that is uncommon. France does not usually lose a war to Burgundy. Really? Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm just bad luck. Maybe I'm just bad juju. Yeah, I don't know why we're improving with France. They're incompetent. We should attack them. No! <laughs> That's bait! <laughs> Drunk stream when? Um, I haven't had anything to drink in like about a month now. Not for any particular reason, but are you kidding me? I went out on Monday. It was wild. <laughs> well, I don't really go out, so it's more like drink at home. So I I don't like to oh try not to do it as often. Well, usually I drink while streaming is where how it starts. You know, I can enact a government reform. You should. You are. You know, related to Enrique. I'm a bad ruler, I get it. <laughs> so, what do you want to enact? Oh man, so what do we have right now? We have feudal nobility? <laughs> yep, so that's the tier one. Uh, the alert is letting you know that we can take a tier two reform. So you can choose between one of those two uh, icons. Either strengthen the nobles or curtail the nobles. So how, how do you feel about the nobility? Uh, I mean, we're not very close with them right now, I don't think. Is it becoming more and more apparent that the old noble families have too much influence and power and their jealous concern for their old privileges is greatly hindering the growth of our government? Um, you know what? We, we can tell the, uh, nobility to... So basically, we're, we're either encouraging the nobles, which means that we get more manpower, or we're curtailing them, which reduces the influence of the nobility estate and then gives us more taxes. 
I, I guess it's supposed to represent, like, well, reigning, reigning the nobles in. Okay, so if if we rein the nobles in, what what are the benefits long term? Do you think? Money, mostly. Just money. And it also makes it easier to keep the nobles' estate at a lower influence level without them, like, without any risk of a disaster. We could hire a general from them every twenty, every ten years if we wanted to, and and not have them go too high on influence. It just depends. I mean, manpower is always good, but in this game, uh, I don't. I don't want to talk like meta and strategy too much because you're still learning. But money is more important than manpower because mercenaries are overpowered. All right, so we're gonna strengthen the noble privileges then. <laughs> okay. Or am I not understanding correctly? That's the exact opposite of what I just said. But yeah, okay, it's good. Let's oh do it. no 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 no! Okay, <laughs> I, I just miss. I'm sorry. This is a lot. I'm trying to process everything. I'm saying I'm, I'm confirming I, the government reform, and we're going to curtail the nobles' privileges. Don't at me. I'm yeah. already a bad ruler. I'm trying not to let my country <laughs> fall apart. <laughs> also, this hair is too big and it's too heavy. I'm it's also not pink. Pink? You want pink? I'll give you purple. You said you had pink. Fine, I'll do pink. <laughs> Okay, now it's pink. No one's gonna recognize you now. You don't look like you don't look I? like Monko Four. What the heck? It's a complete, it's a complete um, new color. I have no. Idea. <laughs> okay, noble birth. Um, guarantee the right to crown. Or we should not commit such promises. Okay, wait, wait. Can you pause? Oh. I'm pausing. Okay. No. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I think we both did it. <laughs> Um, many of the families of the nobility won their current position due to the actions of a forefather who served in the state in the times of war. We can either the nobility estate gains 15 loyalty, burghers lose 20 loyalty, Portugal gets offices of noble birth. I don't know if that's a good idea. I think we should not commit to such promises. So the, the strategy behind it, like what you need to consider is what, what is the current level of influence of each of your estates? That's a big, big factor in it. So you want to Yeah, go I see that. Yeah, go F1, F4, and then look at the numbers, and just know that the the really important thresholds are loyalty, which is the first column of numbers. Mm -hmm. If if it goes below forty, that makes them mad. It's bad, bad. They like they'll you lose modifiers. It's bad for you. The other number that's really dangerous is influence. If their influence gets to a hundred, that's bad. They'll try to take over the country. So right now the nobles have eighty percent influence, which is why we wanted to curtail them when we just did that government reform. They were they were at ninety percent. If you if you emboldened them and then took this click to make them even more, then they could have taken over the country. Just to prove how bad of a ruler you are, basically. <laughs> but no. So then we should lose. We we should if we make them lose for the nobility, which would bring them down to because mm -hmm. right you, now their influence is at eighty percent. Yep, and you can hover over the number to see the exact breakdown of how it got to eighty. That's a lot. Okay. Basically, they control a lot of land right now. They own they own fifty seven percent of the country. So I'm gonna say we cannot commit to such promises. Okay. So that made them mad, but it also brought their influence down. So notice how the numbers. If you go to the estates tab now, they're red instead of green. Yes, I see that. <laughs> if you hover over it, it tells you the breakpoints: forty percent, sixty percent. So if they're below yeah. 40, you get negative 10% manpower plus 10% land maintenance. If they're between 40 and 60, you gain 20% manpower recovery. And only one of these can be true at once. So it's a 30% swing in manpower recovery speed because we've made the nobles mad. But that's fine. We have max manpower. We're just sitting at peace because you're not a warmonger. I don't I've know changed my ways. I don't know what to do. I mean, she won't declare war, chat. Okay. <laughs> I'm sitting here. I, I want to kill things. I want to conquer, but she won't let me. So yeah. <laughs> also, uh, we can take tech. Y you've got your alerts are piling up. I know. I was changing my hair, and all of a sudden, everything's exploding. Um. Yeah, it's, it's a common occurrence. That's like a Monday. Yeah, I know. Okay, I can invest <coughs> in new technology, <gasps> national ideas. So we finally get a new group of ideas. Yep. Cool. So now there's going to be another alert saying you can choose a new idea group. So we have the, you can have up to eight different ID groups over the course of the campaign. The first slot is revealed at Admin Tech Five, which you just took, yeah. and so these are all the different ID groups that we can take. 
All the ones on the left are administrative ideas. They, they cost administrative points to choose. The ones in the middle are Diplo, and the ones on the right are military. You just spent all of our admin points to take the administrative technology, so we don't have any points to invest. So just, just for example, if we were to take Innovative, mm -hmm. we can't take any ideas because we don't have any points. We gotta save up. Each idea costs 400 points. It doesn't actually cost us anything to abandon it since we didn't take any, so just unba I'll abandon it now. And now, so, is there a certain, like, I know instead of if you pick something, you usually have to, like, you know, you, you're going up a technology tree, right? So, you know, I can just, if I wanted to, I could just go all the way to freaking missiles without researching, you know, bronze working. You know, I mean, that's exaggerated, yep. but... It's very common um, uh, in this game, the way that would play out is, like, for example, what we're probably going to, I'm going to recommend you do, just because we're playing as Portugal, is we're going to go for a diplomatic idea group. We're probably going to go for exploration. We want to go explore more, right? You want to go find Brazil yeah. and all that. So the fourth idea group down is called Exploration Ideas. Yep, see it. So we take that. And then what we can do is at the expense of our diplomatic technology, we can just ignore that technology completely and sink all of our diplo points into this idea group. So it's similar to what you just mentioned, where you, you know, get rockets without culture or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because honestly, if you have rockets, who needs culture? I mean, so. I've played a couple of games like that where I've just rushed to like nuclear power and like, oh, I don't know, late renaissance, early industrial. And it's like, I have nukes and people are like, what the hell? Yeah. Space, we call them space marines in E4. If you have like really, really good military skill and power, it's like you've got space marines and you're fighting against people in the 17th century. So now... Kind of similar to taking technology, uh, there's an alert saying you can invest now in an idea. So since we took an idea group that wasn't in the category that we just spent all our points for either military tech or administrative tech, you can take the first idea in exploration, which allows us to recruit explorers and conquistadors. Again, Portugal is special. They get one for free. That's why we were allowed to explore a little bit. But this is what you're supposed to have to actually hire new ones. Got it. Okay. And uh, then there's one other that you should take a look at. It's the superior unit types. So remember how we, we standardized the... What was it called? We standardized oh, pikes? Oh, standardized the pikes, or like the... Yeah. Superior. I guess we made them all the same length now. Uh, <laughs> as we go up in technology, we have to choose one of these different types of infantry. We're on Miltech 5 now, so right. we can we can choose the, the Galaglass infantry. Don't ask me why it's... I, I've been corrected so many times. It's pronounced Galogla with like an S at the end. Galoglass. Gal I have no idea. Why the hell would they spell it this way if they want an S? I'm pretty sure there's this letter in the language It's called an S that makes an S sound. But Galoglass okay. Infantry. And there's the longbow and then men-at-arms. So, um... <laughs> basically, I... It's... You're too new to... It doesn't matter. Just pick one. <laughs> I don't need to explain... The difference in pips. It's its not going to make any difference in your first few campaigns. <laughs> I could go into it, explain it in perfect detail, but it would just be... You don't need to know about it. Just pick one of them. Make sure you have a new... One of those options that's the newest type. Okay, wait. Uh... Why the game gives you three types, I don't know. It's not even a real gameplay. Uh, it doesn't really affect gameplay too much. It does, but not enough. I mean, really I matter. selected it, but like nothing really seemed to change. Uh, yeah, nothing changed, I think, because I chose the first one. Did you choose that too? Yeah. And that's why. Uh. So we, we already had it, so it just doesn't change. <laughs> Basically, you're just changing like where the infantry have their their advantage. Is it in morale? Is it in fire? Is it in shock? But they have the same total number of pips either way. Okay. Where's the monk from? She's from Africa, I think. She said she's she's got some she's got some brown in her. She said, "Well, I'm I'm actually incredibly mixed race. Um, I'm like 14, 13 different ethnicities, but I'm from New York." Did you get the ethnicities thing from like one of those gene testing places, or what? Uh, yeah, actually, we, we've actually gotten an official one done by like a private company because like whenever you do those like twenty three and Me ones, it's not really that detailed of a test. Like we've actually gotten. A detailed test done and it was pretty amazing like my we got it done for my grandparents and then my parents just I guess just I don't know, check or something. 
But um, we found out that like it was kind of incredible because when you put my mom and dad's map together, like the whole world lit up. It was super cool. And like there's like stuff in there I just didn't expect, like Scottish and you know Japanese and you know Iberian and Russian and Afro Caribbean and like like I it was just stuff that like we had no idea, and it was pretty cool. I uh, I saw a post on Reddit sometime in the last month or so of two identical twins who did one of those tests, and they're all bullshit, according to them. Yeah, but the, a lot of them, <laughs> some of the some of them are are bullshit. I mean, listen, it's an estimate, but like they they can try. Um, and that's why you actually have to go to like a private company. Like they cost way way more money. I'm talking like thousands of dollars, but like you spent thousands of dollars to realize that you're from more than one place. It was more like my parents, because you have to understand is that like we have no family records after a year uh, because like a lot of stuff got lost in floods. Um, a lot of stuff got like lost in fires and things like that or during wars. And we don't have as we can't go as far back as we wanted. Um, and we just have kind of like word of mouth. And we found out that we have like family in New, or New Orleans. We found that we have, we have family like, directly in France, like all, all sorts of stuff like the last, uh, the most recent generations within like the last 300 to 400 years is uh, Native American, African American, Iberian, French, and um, West African. Did I say West African? Hmm. As far as I know, my cousin told me told me that our family is like primarily Scottish, which is unfortunate because I can't do the Scottish accent very well. Oh, and, uh, I'm a little Scottish too. Oh my god, people are right. France is dying. France is uh, getting cut yeah. too. I noticed that like France is like in the middle of this massive rebellion of like Sicilian heretics and nobles and stuff. And Castile's like, hmm, seems like a good country to ally. <laughs> I'm gonna ally <laughs> France. So now Castile is allied to France, which is gonna kind of cause a problem for us because uh, politically, we're allied are to Castile. Both of them. We're allied to Castile. We're, we've improved relations with France. We're still allied to England, and France hates England. So it's possible, it's unlikely anytime soon, but it's possible that France could call Castile an, into a war against England, mm -hmm. and then we would get called in defensively to protect England, and then our long ally, Castile, would be our enemy. And that would That's just be so fitting. Complicated. That would be fitting because you're a bad ruler, so... Wow! <laughs> so rude. I'm just stating the facts. <laughs> you're the one that said let them eat cake, so... Oh, listen, I have a Rococo wig right over there. If you're gonna keep making fun of me, I'm just gonna put it on. I don't know what Rococo means. Just like I don't know what the dabbing same is era, and like, other stuff. Like, you know, Marie Antoinette, like that era of time and I styles. I don't know all of your new new age fangled new words. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. And just before that was neoclassicism or classic classicism, whatever. But I took art history, okay? Why? I have to. Oh. Yeah, that's the only reason people would take that, right? <laughs> I have to. <laughs> I had to. Yeah.